So there has been a lot of chatter initially that uh, COVID-19 could deliver a lethal blow to Mexican organized crime, but it turns out it hasn't been a game changer as such. One of the signs thereof is that uh, the levels of conflict, of lethal conflict we've seen out there have not been curbed, as has been partly the case in Central America, of course, but have remained at a very worryingly high uh, lethal level um, for the pandemic as well. So um, if you look at the uh, homicide curve during this time in Mexico, it's remained pretty much stable in line with the trend of previous years. We're looking at the likelihood of hitting a new uh, record for most homicides ever recorded in Mexico this year, which is telling you that for those groups, it has not been um, a blow of any definitive kind um, during the pandemic. In Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador, the response of the various governments to, to the crisis is believed to have delivered a blow to criminal organizations and their operations as it changed the rules of, of the game and the environment in which these organizations operate. This translated in a dip in levels of homicide, with March classifying as the least violent month in years. Criminal gangs even found in the pandemic an opportunity to reassert or expand their territorial control and to try and change their public image. For example, in some cities of El Salvador, the MS-13 imposed quarantines to contain the spread of the virus, while the 18th Street gang handed out food bags. And in Guatemala, for example, they even donated thousands of face masks to public authorities. Their chief concern, analysts say, isn't for the greater good, but strategic gains. But as criminal organizations quickly adapted to the situation in the three countries, levels of homicides have started to pick up again and are now back to pre-crisis levels. But we've seen in, in previous occasions, like in April, where gangs decided to step up homicides and, and produce this uptick in violence, that their commitment to peace is far from robust. Governments should direct emergency funds made available by their parliaments to address the COVID-19 crisis to not only improve the uh, provision of public services, but also to address the situation of the most violent regions and vulnerable populations.